About 150 years ago, I started a project to upgrade the valves in my bass trombone. I had a Bark 50B3 that utilized rotary valves, which look a little bit like that. In fact, they looked exactly like this, this being the rotary valves, and to replace them with Thayer valves. Well, that project has finally been completed. Wasn't without some downfalls, however. Um, what I discovered is that, unsurprisingly, the project was a little bit more complicated than I uh, or originally thought it was going to be. Uh, and that complication was due to the fact that the bits that I was going to put on the trombone didn't actually come from another bark trombone. They came from a different brand of trombone. So I needed to source some new braces, I needed to have tools that I didn't have here, and I needed capability that I didn't happen to have. So I ended up boxing everything up and shipping it up to a uh, repairer, repair technician, and they completed the project for me. But I have the result, and here it is, and isn't it a beauty? The trombone has had the lacquer taken off the bell, not because it was a preference or I asked for it, it was just tidy because the lacquer was two thirds removed anyway. Uh, the lacquer is still on the inside of the bell, uh, but the outside has had it uh, taken off. Um, and the instrument, it functions. It is a beautiful instrument uh, and it is very enjoyable to play. One of the questions that I have been asked is why would I go to this expense and this trouble? Absolutely, the Bark 50B3 with the original rotary valve sections that sat, you know, originally set up here, they worked fine. Many players do great things and can make great sounds with a valve section like this on their trombone. Why would I want to upgrade and why would I consider it an upgrade uh, to change the valves out? And so to answer that, I'll compare life with between this trombone and my other main bass trombone, which is a King 7B that also uses rotary valves. The way rotary valves are designed is that they involve a number of relatively tight bends and twists in the tubing here. Now the trombone is a, by default, a reasonably open instrument. You only have the bend at the end of the slide here, which is a gradual bend, it's not a particularly sharp bend, and you have another bend at the end of the bell um, section up here. Other than that, it's a straight through instrument. As a consequence of that, there isn't a lot of resistance to the air going out of your mouth. Uh, it is a free-blowing instrument. When you have a valve section like this, it introduces resistance. That changes the tonal characteristics of the instrument uh, and so forth. My own personal experience with rotary valves also means that uh, I had to sort of really be in tune with how the instrument would respond in order to get it to play the way that I did. As an example of that, if I'm trying to articulate a note that doesn't use the valves, then I can just play. But if I'm wanting to articulate notes that do use the valves, and particularly when going between you know, various trigger combinations, if I'm doing that whilst moving the slide out, I need to behave in a particular way. If I'm trying to move the slide in, I have to articulate in a bit of a different way. You have to really be in tune with the, all the things that you're trying to do as a player mechanically with how your lip needs to function, uh, how your articulation needs to respond in order to get the instrument to play the way that you want it to do. Um, and you'd have to learn all of that. You'd have to know how your instrument's going to respond at quiet dynamics and medium dynamics and so forth because it would all be variable. I could absolutely get my King 7B to do anything that I'd want it to do, but I would just have to know how I was going to achieve that with the instrument. Uh, it was a not a consistent experience. One of the advantages that I've found with these Thayer valves is that because the valves themselves are a lot more free-blowing, they're a lot more open, the instrument is a lot more consistent. I don't have to have a table of uh, scenarios playing through my head that says, right, if I want to play these notes at this volume, and if I want to do this particular slur between these particular notes at this particular volume, I have to approach it in a particular way. Don't have to memorize nearly as many sort of exceptions to get the instrument to sound the way that I want it to sound. 
That is the big difference for me. I get the instrument to have a more consistent uh, feel, a more consistent approach. And as a musician who plays the bass trombone sporadically, it's not an instrument that I play week in, week out. Uh, that is certainly very helpful because there's a number of times with my King 7B, I will be playing it and then I will remember what I need to do immediately after I've forgotten to do it. So um, that is one of the you know, key advantages to having an instrument like this. The biggest disadvantage that I've learned is that with rotary valves, you can use that extra resistance for you, um, as an advantage. So because the instrument's got a bit of back pressure, it means that the amount of effort that you put in comes, uh, you get a slightly reduced amount of sound for that effort. So if you put a number five quantity of air through the instrument, you get a number three quantity of volume at the end of it. You can use that trait, uh, that, that, that particular characteristic to play almost inaudibly. Uh, and I could play my King 7B at a, at a volume that was unusably quiet. I could put in a three volume of energy and I could get a one volume of sound. With this, because it is much more open, much more free blowing, uh, you put in a three amount of energy, you get a three amount of sound at the end of it. Now that sort of efficiency can be useful, but if you're playing very quietly and you need to play very quietly, it's easier to do that on an instrument that has more resistance, or at least that's what I found in comparing the two. The big problem that I have with this trombone now is actually nothing to do with the valves at all. It is uh, the slide. This slide is in an abysmal condition. So this instrument came uh, from an estate sale from a man who died uh, a long time ago and his family were selling it off. Um, and I have no idea how long the instrument was sitting for. It must have been subject to some reasonably harsh conditions because the slide is a basket case. There are patches of red rock along the entire slide. There are little holes at the bottom of the outer slide tubes. The lead pipe, uh, which isn't supposed to be as easily removable as it is, but it is uh, removable, has got a big split that's that long running down the side of it. This needs to be completely replaced. The at least the outer slides need to be completely replaced, if not the whole slide. Um, so I've now got a bit of a bill or a decision that I need to make. Do I bother getting this slide replaced? I'd really love to, um, but how I approach that, I'm not too sure. There are a couple of different ways I could do it. Um, so if anyone's got a spare slide for a Bark 50 or something that is compatible with a Bark 50, just drop me a line and we can have a chat. Uh, but anyway, I thought I would um, complete this sort of video series that started literally years ago uh, and say that the instrument's finished. The next time I play this out, I'll try and get some recording so that you guys can all see what it sounds like, see and hear what it sounds like. I've played it out a few times in a band context, I just don't have any recordings of that, and it plays wonderfully. If any of you have any questions that you would like to ask about this instrument, then please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.